Welcome to True Blue Services, your trusted partner for top-notch electrical solutions. At True Blue, we pride ourselves on quality and reliability. With a four-year warranty, you can rest easy knowing your electrical needs are in expert hands. Electrical vehicle charging stations, we're certified for Tesla and ChargePoint, installing thousands from top brands like Loop and Clipper Creek. Call 404-372-1916 or visit www.truebluservicesga.com. Use promo code TRUE62. Hi, and welcome to today's live episode of Conversations with Karen and Kat. I'm Karen Scott Green. And I'm Kat Hardrick. <laughs> and we have the pleasure of sitting here tonight with John Moy, who is the Urban League, who's with the Urban League. He is the Senior Director for Policy, Legislative Affairs, and Civic Engagement. Woo! Woo! Our background noise, right? <laughs> That is a lot. Uh, John, thank you for being here. You gave us some homework. Yes. Um, where we had to, we were looking at the state of Black Georgia, which was yes. authored by, um, authored by the, the, the Urban League. Mm -hmm. yes. And I, I'm dumbfounded because we, I learned some things that I had, I didn't know yeah. about the state of black, the state of black Georgia, mm -hmm. and the work that we have to do. And what I love about the report is that it wasn't a list of complaints. It was observations. You guys did the research. You talked, yes. went around the state to yes. the different um, centers around the state, rural mm -hmm. and urban. Yes. And you talked to folks and you did the research in economics, education, social justice, health, civic engagement, criminal um, justice, criminal justice, and then you 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 also wrapped it up with policy recommendations. So it wasn't just it's not just oh here's what's wrong with the state here's what we're doing wrong That's right. That's but right. here's some things we can do to fix it. Yeah. So let's jump in, John. Sure. Well, well, first of all, thank you, Karen, and thank you, Kat, and uh, and thank you all to the listening audience. So just very quickly, 30,000 uh, feet overview, very, very quick. So the National Urban League under our president, uh, Mark Morial, uh, conducts every year since 1976 a State of Black America report. So whether you live in Arkansas or Oregon or New York or, or Georgia or wherever, we issue an annual report on the state of Black folk. And mm -hmm. Uh, housing and education, uh, it, you know, economic indicators, how our kids are doing, how the seniors are doing. And then we issue a report with, with policy recommendations nationally. And then we go up on the hill, we talk to the administration, and we try to get national stuff done. But we said it as an organization here in Atlanta, Nancy Flick Johnson is our president and CEO, our fearless leader for the last 16 years. And we said, kudos to Nancy. That's right. And we had a conversation one day and we were talking and we we're like, you know what, why don't we do something similar? Mm -hmm. You know, it's, you know, and, and make a long story short, we did. We marshaled resources. We found the best and the brightest. And we said, let's go on a listening tour. Let's listen first. Let's not jump to any conclusions. Mm -hmm. Let's listen. But we have to go beyond the Atlanta metropolitan region to get a real snapshot of what's going on in the state of Georgia. And so we did. We got in the car and we did a road trip. We went to Macon and, and Augusta and Albany and Savannah and Columbus. And we met with HBCU presidents and Title I schools and district attorneys and members of Congress and hospital presidents and rural farmers. And we walked out to really get a, a snapshot. And then when we came back to Atlanta, we compiled this information and we mm -hmm. dropped it last year at the state legislature, this time last year on the state of Black Georgia and the 
the numbers were just staggering. I, I, staggering. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, here's the good news. We, and we said going out, and if Nancy was on, she'd say the same thing. We said, listen, it's not going to be a doom and gloom report. Right. Okay. Because if you look at where we were, where we've been in the history of the Republic, in the history of this Republic, and where we are now, obviously, we have made quantum leaps. You know, mm -hmm. we, you know, we came over in chains. That's factual. We freed ourselves with a little war. You know, we, you, you know, we, we created fought, schools, we created wars churches. And schools, and we did, you know, we got to Jim Crow and segregation. And we, you know, we, we changed the world with the, with a pastor from, 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 from Atlanta. We mm -hmm. changed the world. And, and whether it's in South Africa, not African Americans, we have changed the world. Our culture reverberates worldwide. Correct. But some of us are doing okay. And guess what? Some of us are still struggling in this state, in the number one place to do business. If I hear that anymore, I'm going to go crazy. Yeah. So I'll be quiet. I'll, I'll turn no, it back. No, I, I, I no. Because while it is a great place to do business, one of the things that the report pointed out is that Black businesses, Black-owned businesses do not fare well, have not been faring well. Karen, don't you get me started. Listen, no, we need to get, you, you, started. To get you started. Why are you going to get me started? Because, we're, because here we go. So in the state of Georgia, I mean, I'm talking about your tax, your dollars, not mine, mm -hmm. and mine included. You have an annual annual budget that exceeds, I believe, about, I believe about $40 billion mm -hmm. in procurement. So we buy everything in the state. From am I right? Pens, paper, mm -hmm. police cars, you name it, A to Z, soup to nuts. The state purchases it, right. and when the and the state, by their own admission, the state conducted a disparity study. Now this is what federal dollars, because you know, if you receive federal money, uh, it, you know most states do for roads and bridges and stuff. The federal government has something called a DBE program. That's for disadvantaged business enterprises. Yes. So with the federal money that the state receives. 1% with the federal money that the state receives, 1% by their own admission goes to DBE businesses. And guess what? There's no MBE program in the state of Georgia. Zip, what? zero, zilch, nada, nuka. As I used to say when I was a kid, not nada, nada. <laughs> okay. And I'm like, what? And so, you know, bill after bill after bill. You know, it, it, because you can't get this stuff out of if you if you can't get a hearing for the bill, you can't get it out of committee. It's it's DOA. It's dead. It's dead on arrival. So here we are, uh, and we're going to have a transportation summit uh, this year, talking about the federal money that's coming down the pike. I mean, Joe Biden just changed the world. We have the biggest infrastructure program since Dwight David Eisenhower in the mm. 50s. Mm -hmm. How much how much of it is it going to go? To folks that look like us, I'm not being that's just as taxpayers, right? Well, you know, I don't want to get you know get on that soapbox, but we've been talking about it over and over and over again. How can you build generational wealth? I mean, hey. don't tell me that big business Boeing has contracts with, with the United States of America, don't they? I'm talking about yeah. Boeing. I'm talking huh? about big companies, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, the United States government purchases everything, right? Mm -hmm. They have to. They don't manufacture, you know, air, you know, airplanes and stuff like that. But, you know, but so in some ways, you know, we're locked out of, of, of procurement and some folks want to hear it and some folks don't want to hear it. And some people, oh, yeah, we're with you. But at, at the end of the day, it has to be it, it cannot be that uh, that uh, that uh, it, how can it be in a state that a third of the state. Are people of color? That's just black folks. That's not Latinos. That's not Asians. That's not women. And there's no procurement opportunities to do business with the state in which you live and in which you pay taxes. I, I don't get that. Can I you, just don't get it. Can you do me a favor since you drop the stats? Can you go by the categories in which your study, the league study was conducted on and just drop a few facts per category from the health crisis or health, social justice, criminal justice, education, just drop a few facts. You've already mentioned a little bit about education and uh, as it pertains to Black people, how how their reading level, their percentage of their reading level, how many are actually reading at grade level. Can you speak to those numbers and let people know? Because I believe if people can put matrix and money 
to the problem, it'll wake us up instead of just like little sound bites that does not provide, you know, qualitative. I agree. So, 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 so let's just start if we can. I'm looking at the report as I talk to you. Mm -hmm. So what Nancy said, listen, we, we went by region. Okay. So let's just take a look at the regions mm -hmm. and, and outside of, outside of the city of Atlanta. Let's just talk about region. So I'm, I'm assuming you have a very broad audience. Yes. And uh, so let's just take a look at some of the regions here. So for example, we took a look at black folks, uh, you know, you know, that, you know, that are incarcerated. Mm -hmm. And the state has, the state has 4.3 million Georgians with a criminal, with a criminal, with a criminal record. Mm -hmm. All right. It, it, and, and in Georgia, black people represent the, uh, the uh, however, black people represent 13% of the nation's population and 38% of the federal uh, pr prison population. And here in Georgia, let me just give you, let me just give you some stats here. Give me just one moment. Exactly. Let's, you know what, let's, while we do it, let's just talk about health very quickly because I think yeah. everybody can kind of connect with health. Okay. So for example, in Albany, Georgia, mm -hmm. okay, of the asthma rates, of, uh, in terms of asthma, 67% of, of, of folks in Albany who are black have asthma. Mm. 42% cancer, 72% 72, 72 with diabetes, 51% with heart disease. Compared to the Atlanta uh, region, 49% asthma, 32% cancer rate, 48% diabetes, a 41%, a 34% in terms of heart disease, and on and on. And I think Albany, Georgia, for, for all the leading uh, indicators, Albany, and I'm not picking on Albany, Georgia, and I was correct. It's not Albany. It's Albany. <laughs> That's right. You're from there. It's Albany. <laughs> you know, in, in, a, in a respect, and I was corrected uh, several times. You know, in, in a very respectful way. When you took, a, you know, first of all, Albany was the epicenter for the pandemic. That was the first mm -hmm. place in Georgia to get hit. I, I mean, remember people that. died in droves there. So when you take a look at housing, uh, a lack of housing. When you take a mm -hmm. look at Title I schools. When you take a look at, at, at children living in poverty. Uh, when you take a look at uh, uh, at home ownership home ownership rate, it's mm -hmm. all in the basement, and there's mm -hmm. a and there's a direct correlation between this. I mean, you know, you know, I'm not saying that government is a silver bullet is a silver is a silver bullet to, to 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 all of the ills of society, but I can tell you one thing: Lyndon Johnson believed in put forward a great society program. Mm -hmm. Franklin Roosevelt put together put together a, a, a you know the uh, the uh, you know the fair deal, uh, um, um, uh, you know back in the 1930s because there was a recognition that the country was in trouble and it needed help, and mm -hmm. so that's no different now. I want our people to understand something, and I want people to listen to me very clearly. And people sometimes they, they get quiet. Mm -hmm. We live in a global community. Mm -hmm. If the 20th century was the American century and it was post the Second World War. I don't know where we're going to end up in the next 25 or 30 years, where we are. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that that our country is strong, robust. Why? If for no other reason, because we live here. That's right. And, and in order to maintain our way of a standard of life, to maintain the, the way we live in healthcare, we need an educated populace yes. who can read and write and think. Mm -hmm. And 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 so uh, I was talking to a friend of mine who's a lobbyist today. And she's uh, she's in the uh, in the business of fighting for for housing, and I said, you know, I, I wish I could. And housing is another is another issue, but I said, but if I had to lay down the gauntlet of where it is, uh, and there's so many areas of which I'm fighting every day. I promise you, I'm fighting every day. Mm -hmm. It has to be education because that that will lift us out. You know, there was a reason why slaves couldn't read. <laughs> you know, the, well, well, they didn't want them to read, you know? The knowledge was power. Knowledge is wanted, power. Knowledge is power. I wanted to go back to healthcare. Sure. Um, one of the things that struck me, and I, I pulled it out, is that 1.4 million Georgians do not have health insurance. And Georgia's uninsured rate of 13.7% is the third highest in the country. And it's even worse for rural Georgia. The uninsured rate could climb to more than 25% by 2026, that's two years. Mm -hmm. The organization found that closing the coverage gap could help 
address rural disparities in healthcare, access, and outcomes. About 36% of Georgians in the coverage gap are Black, and 22% are Latinx. And that was a year ago. And since we issued right. the report a year ago, we had the hospital closure in Atlanta. Yes. Can you mm -hmm. imagine that? In a, in, in a major American city. Two hospitals? Yeah. Think, I want you to think about that. You know, I had a health scare a few years ago, and by the grace of God, everything worked out. But for some people, if you have a stroke or a heart attack or whatever, minutes is the difference between life or death. Life and death. At seconds. You Can you imagine that? So if there, there are some hospitals in, rural, in some areas of rural Georgia that don't have hospitals. So, or, 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 you know, OGB about 35, 30 to 30 minutes or more away to the next time. You're done. Yeah. You're done. I, when we when we met with the, the commissioner in Augusta, so help me God, I, I kid you not. I, I thought, I said, Commissioner, say it again. He said, John, we only have five ambulances for the uh -huh. city. I couldn't believe it. I said, how many? He said, five. Uh -huh. Did you say Augusta? And Augusta's a mid-sized city. That's what he said. Limited. Mm. So, so if they were to have a, cat a, a, a catastrophic event, mm -hmm. if they were to have a car accident, mm -hmm. a multi-car multi multi -car, multi -car, car accident. I don't know how to do that. I don't even get it. I have family that live there. It's. It's staggering when you know this stuff and you see it firsthand. And it's, hard to, it's hard to sleep at night. I'll, I'll be very, I'll be candid with you because when you know that you know, you know, mm. and uh, just you, in terms of hospitals, in terms of rural Georgia, you know, a, a huge uh, a population of, of black folks still live in rural Georgia. You know, you know yes. everybody mm. didn't leave. Yeah, everybody didn't go to Chicago or Detroit or New York mm -hmm. or California. A lot of people stayed, generationally yes. stayed. You know. Mm -hmm. And but but they're not but because we lack political power, I'm not here to talk about Democrats or Republicans. I'm just talking about black folks. Black folks, the power to. And vote. I don't want to get myself in trouble, so let me maybe back away from that. <laughs> I'll say it. We understand. We understand. Okay. <laughs> so, we so, so, so 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 you know you know and uh, you know if, if we could at least if we could be in the game, we could we could sort of um. You know, sort of push back on this stuff, but I mean, I mean, and over the last few years, when you take a look at some of the legislation that's been passed, I mean, mm -hmm. if you hand out a bottle of water, I mean, all this goofy stuff in America. Now we're you know we're banning books. I'm not saying we're doing that in Georgia and all this other. I mean, I, I never in my life did that I ever think I hear some of this stuff that we're hearing, and I you know it's not it's like my grandmother would say, you know, John, she said it ain't what they call you. Is what you answer to. Mm. All right. That's right. You know, so when you talk about the, you know, a new gen, and I'm not, you know, knocking any new generations, I think that folks have to really understand a really old jokes aside. And I know, you know, what's at stake is a lot at stake. And mm. I really believe in my heart, and I got to be cool how I say it, that this election is much more than about two parties. It's really about who we are as Americans. That's yeah. right. And do we believe, and you know, I, 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 it sounds a little bit corny because sometimes I get into what, my. It's into about my, yes, what do we believe in, what is acceptable, and what we as a country are willing to allow. Boom. You, you know, I, I'm a little <laughs> uh, on the nerdy side. That's what my wife says, but that, that's fine. I'm blessed she likes nerds. And uh, so. <laughs> You know, I, I I love the story. It, I, I believe it's 1789 or 1787. It's in Pennsylvania. You know, the um, they've just finished up with the Constitutional Convention. Mm -hmm. And Benjamin Franklin, he's leaving. It's it's in the fall. I believe it's in September. And he's getting in his carriage and he's leaving. And some of the lady asked him, they, they said, Dr. Franklin, you know, because they're done. He's going home. And they say, you know, well, what do we have? Do we have a, you know, a monarchy or a republic? And Benjamin Franklin says, a republic. If we can keep it, mm. if we can keep it, mm. and so you know, it, you know, you know, um, you know, my dad, and you know, he's gone now. God, but we used to have these classic debates, and he was a, a man of his time, and mm -hmm. he had some serious issues with the way things are or were, and um, and I used to say, 
And I think he thought I drank the Kool-Aid. I did not. But I would say, you know, Dad, I said, let me ask you a question. And I said, if America went bye-bye today, if, 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 if the flags were lowered on, on every corner of the earth, of, it was as, if the republic as we know it was gone, who, Dad? The Chinese? I have nothing against the Chinese. The Russians? I have nothing against the Russians. Who, Dad? Who? With the same, who, Dad? And despite all of the knocks that we've taken as African-Americans, and we've taken a lot of knocks, okay? But we believed in a more perfect union. We believed in the virtues of democracy. That, that transcends party. It's a universal declaration of the human experience that everybody has the right to be free. Yes. We as Africa, even when we were in change. We've always, we've always had that hope. Always. Even when this country did not consider our That's ancestors right. as full right. human beings, That's we right. have always believed in the ideals of America. Always. Right. Which is From universal. Going back to um going back to the the war of independence. That's right. Black folks. Folks of African descent have fought in every war that this country has had. Amen. Every war. Every war. And volunteered, not always drafted, volunteered, because there That's was right. a time when they didn't draft us. That's we right. volunteered for That's wars. Right. Because we wanted America to be better. We want America to live up to her promises. And Dr. King talked about that. You know, and and, it, 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 and I, I often think about Frederick Douglass. You know, I, I, I hear myself. You know, you know, what does America mean to me? When he wrote that in seventeen you know, on the hundredth anniversary of America, what is what is, what is the Fourth of July to the Negro? What is the Fourth of July? You know, you know, to the Negro, absolutely. You know, and so you know, I just we have a rich history uh, in this country, and we have to understand who we are and where we are. Um, as Americans, particularly as African Americans, and we can't walk away from that. We yeah. cannot do that because what's at stake is uh, yeah. is your kids and my grandchildren, and the future. So, uh, you know, the state of Black Georgia took a lot out of the Urban League. I think Nancy and I were exhausted for about six months. Um, but you did you did good work, and we, we got to get this information uh, out here. I want to add. I want to add before we get too far. I'm rubbing my forehead. I, I think one thing for me is not only do we have to realize that it's our our dreams and hopes and our actions to prove that we want to have social, economic, and environmental justice and be treated like a human being, we also need to realize that as we walk this path, there are people who don't want that to happen. So we can't continue to act, um, don't, don't negate that because I feel like the fight that we're fighting, those of us, that are in the realm and doing the work to make sure that we have justice all across the board. It falls on people's ears who is just like, no, we good. I got a little something, I'm all right. But it's more than just you, because that yeah. can be taken away from you like that. In a nanosecond. In a nanosecond. Yeah. I, mean, I, mean, I mean, you had Roe v. Wade, rightly or wrongly, I'm not gonna wait into that. Sure. But the fact After that for 50 years and you mean overnight that's gone. You had a, you had affirmative action in this country mm -hmm. for 40 feet and you know, overnight. That's it is gone. So don't tell me that, you know, and you know then, if you say, uh, what is it? Uh, oh, Lord Jesus, about school segregation. Yeah. Uh, OK, so why uh, we're we're back. We're integrated. So it's like, no, is it Percy? What's the name of the, the Percy versus Percy. Ferguson. OK, boom. And then you had Brown. Right. Versus Board of yes. Education. Now we are integrated, but the money shows us that we're still segregated. The yes. money tells you. Let me tell you something. I'm so glad you said that. You follow the money. You follow, follow the, the money. money, and if right. you want to see where a person you see where priorities, the priorities are, you want to see where person's right. priorities. See where they spend their money. Mm -hmm. But you can't tell me. Oh, you guys, you guys are trying to get me in trouble. <laughs> no, we, just, we want see, you to talk yeah. about what your research found. What our, we research, just want to what our research found, thank you for that. Right. Yes. I appreciate you for that lifeline. <laughs> is that um, is that That's we're just not making the investments that we need? And, and I said, I, and again, I said yesterday, we are, I was testifying uh, before a committee on on pre K. It was pre. I, I've, I've testified on gun safety. I've testified on pre K. I've testified on black maternal health 
And I, mm. I'm getting a little fuzzy because because on at every turn we're we are catching it. Mm-hmm. But mm. you know, we're just we're just not putting the resources where we need. And, and as I said to some folks today, I had a pretty good uh, meeting today with some folks, and I said, listen, I said, you know, it has to. It's a win win for everybody. For every dollar you spend for PK, I mean, you you, you know, why do we have to spend? You know these inordinate amount of money on, 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 on the back end when we can spend uh, real investments on the front. I'd, I'd rather see kids graduate from high school and graduate from college and go to trade school or college or whatever, I, I, you know, home ownership, you know, that it's a win-win for everybody. So I just, you know, I know that we are in a, a in a fight and a battle and uh, we just have to keep on trucking. Because there is a, there is a nexus, which you're, um, report showed uh, there's a connection between students graduating and graduating and incarceration rates. Students Correct. that are literate and incarceration rates. According to, to your report, 85% of all juveniles who interface with the juvenile court system are functionally low illiterate. Juvenile incarceration reduces probability of high school completion and increases the probability of incarceration later in life. High school dropouts are three and a half times, this shocked me, high school graduates are three and a half times more likely than high school graduates to be arrested in their lifetime. And Mm. 63% 63 more likely to be incarcerated than their peers with four-year college degrees. Oh, you know, there's a direct correlation. And guess what? And That's prisons okay. are built on fourth grade scores. I mean, I mean, I mean, let's like all jokes aside. Right. And I think people really have to understand that. I mean, what if we could. And I bet you dollars to donuts that somewhere yeah. lost along the line. Those kids either were underperforming in school. I mean, you, you just, you know, you know, there were underperformance issues there. So it would have mm-hmm. what if we had we caught it in time, you know. Right. Right. Yeah. And that's that one statistic. I don't know if you see it in there, too, uh, Karen, where it said, like I said, the GBI was saying that their they their own report said that the increase in prison numbers is direct link to low funding of, yes. of, of school of education. And, and who is that saying again? And, and who that's, said that's GBI's. That's their own report. In, in your you. report that you provided, you see it inside of your Thank report you. under the. Thank um, you criminal justice system. Thank you. You know, so if, if how, how can people, before I move on, you said two things. One, you said you had an upcoming event that y'all were doing. Um, yeah, I, 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 I want everybody to, to stay tuned. I want you to go, go to the Urban League website mm-hmm. and uh, we're going to, I'm going to give you the website right now. Is it the, yeah. the it, UGL? It, yes, ma'am. ATL.org. You got it. Yeah, there we, you go. We got to get over here on conversations with Kim. All right, there you go. So, 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 listen. <laughs> just check out. You know, check it out. Uh, we'll, we're we're going to have a, a a transportation summit coming up very, very soon, and uh, so that we can educate our people on 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 their tax dollars and how you can benefit. Now, you know, I think you was, somebody was talking about EV charging stations. I mean, it's going to revolutionize the way things are done. Whether it's the the, the chip act, the, the the chips act, or broadband. That's being expanded in Georgia, EV charging stations in Georgia. So good stuff. A lot of good stuff is coming down the pike, but stay tuned. Okay. Okay. That's good to know. The other thing I want to mention is how can people get involved with these initiatives and be a part of your next report? Oh boy, that's a great question. Mm. Wow, that's a great question. You know what I would say? I would say, um, you know, join, you know, join, listen, join the the Urban League. Uh, um, you know, listen. I, I'll, I'll give you my my email address is uh, is public. It's J Moy, uh, J M O Y E at U L G O T L dot O R G. That's J Moy J M O Y E at U L G A T L dot O R G. Send me a text message. I mean, send me an email. And I, I, I trust me, I can assure you, we have plenty of work to do. We'll put you to work. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that is J M O Y E at U L G A T L at dot O R G. Yes, ma'am. O R G. So if you want yeah. to get in contact, you want to, and also if you want to 
uh, get a copy of that report, you can go to uh, to the Urban League website. The Urban League website. It's the state of Black Georgia, and it is chop full of some nuggets of research yes. that um, the field research that they conducted themselves um, mm -hmm. and compiled. And you had several po policy holders, policy advocates that were. We did. We, we, we brought in a, a treasure trove of, of, of subject matter experts, mm -hmm. uh, everything from Dr. Michelle Nelson talking about healthcare disparities to folks talking about education. So it's a it's a real plethora, a real treasure trove of, of information from some of the smartest people uh, certainly around the state. And the last thing I would say is that the Calvary ain't coming. Mm. We are going to 10th. We're going to Facts. save ourselves and save our people by the grace of God and with a lot of prayer. And we are in. Mm -hmm. So let's don't give up. Continue. John, one of the things that I did want us to talk about, or wanted you just to sure. expand on, is that you talk about this digital divide. Like there are some areas of this state that are digital deserts. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, and so households that don't have internet have tech, don't have computers. Can you talk about that a little bit? Sure. I, you know, we saw it, you know, we saw it during the pandemic. I mean, I, I, I you know, my wife would come home at night and I would get it, you know, an earful uh, just in terms of uh, during the pandemic, how many kids didn't have access to computers? How many kids didn't have access to, to, um, you know, to broadband, you know, we had to have, you know, uh, uh, school buses uh, where kids could, 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 could have access to Wi-Fi. But not only that, uh, rural Georgia. So, you know, so right now the, the state has received in excess of a, of a billion dollars, they've created a, a, an organization uh, to, to, to expand uh, a broadband throughout our state to make sure that all of our schools and all of our folks are connected. It's an issue. I mean, in this day and age, listen, look, this is the most powerful thing that you have. Yeah. This is, it. this is you know, this, you know, for what it's I feel. It's a computer. This is a, a major yeah. power thing yeah. in your hand. But we want to make sure that uh, that our folks are getting connected. So I, I would just say, you know, you know, you know, uh, stay tuned to, uh, uh, to where, where the state is in terms of broadband. If not, at the minimum, contact your state legislator or your state senator. Make an inquiry re regarding broadband if you if it if it's not enough within your area and see when when it's coming to you. You know what? There's a mayor um, in Alabama back in 2021 that I met that actually passed free broadband the free broadband to the citizens of that city. And they had a partnership with the other, um, you know, the cable companies and whatnot, and they were able to make that happen. And I'm sure if we could, if you really wanted to make stuff happen, that's all you got to do is look around because as mm -hmm. my grandmother would say, there's nothing new under the sun, right? And so if you just really wanted to make positive impact, then that's all you got to do is just go out there and do it. Like you said, what's the, can you talk, what's the surplus now for, for Georgia's budget? It exceeds $11 billion. Oh, okay. 11 that's billion. A drop in, oh, that's a drop in the bucket. 11 but, billion. You know, so we don't, I don't even know if we even need to get to the budget. There is, we are all taxed or there's all, any of us who have cell phones, we pay a fee on our, our little, um, fee on our bills each month that's supposed mm -hmm. to subsidize and, and help provide broadband. It's on, mm -hmm. on, on your cable bills. It's on your cell phone bills. That's supposed to help provide um, service, Wi-Fi, internet to help bring it to rural areas. So is that not enough funding? Do where I would like to know where that money is. Or I, what I, is that I, money? Say, girl, get out of my head. It's not the fact that we ain't paying it. The fact is, where's it going? Well, well, well listen, it, it, you know, there are decisions right now. You have a, 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 about 200 people at the state legislature that are making decisions about where the money is going to go. Mm. And, you know, I, and, you know, you know, Tip O'Neill used to be the former speaker of the House uh, for, for the House of Representatives. And Tip would say, you know, all politics is local. You have to go to your school board. You know, I, I always ask people straight up, forget about the big stuff. Can you tell me who your county commissioner is? Can you tell me? Can you tell me what your school budget is, or what the county budget is, or who your local mayor is? And if you can't tell me that, if you don't know who your county commissioner is, that's a problem. Oh, we say this all the time. I mean, for real, for real, because I trust. I trust. I live in Gwinnett County. They're meeting 
they're going to be, they have to meet as a body and they yeah. have to vote on a budget. Gwinnett's budget for Gwinnett County is over a billion dollars. That's just for the, I believe for the school budget, a billion would it be. Yeah. And so if nobody shows up, somebody has to make those decisions in your name. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so as citizens, we are in a participatory democracy. You don't have the luxury of sitting back and not participating. It's structured for you to open your mouth, participate, ask questions. Guess what? And if, you, if, and if you're mad at the SOBs, then run. Run for office. Yes. office and throw the bombs out. What's the point? We, we, know, about going to. we know something about that. Right. <laughs> yeah, we both do. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I'm sorry, Karen. I just... One thing that just rubs me is it grinds my gears. The I feel like it is intentional to keep us plugged into the matrix for lack of a better term so that we don't show up to these meetings. So we don't voice our opinions. You have meetings at times that people can't make it because we are experiencing economic disparities that we can't miss our job. Yes. We don't have transportation to get us home or to get our kids. Oh, our kids can't go to pre-K or early learning or after school care. So who's going to take care of the baby while we're trying to go to all these meetings, right? So it's such a, it's stacked, right? So everything uh, bounces right off of one another. If you can't get health care, you're too sick to go to work or school. And then... If you got minimum wage, what is minimum wage? Seven dollars and some change. It was three dollars when I was growing up. Wrong. It's, it's in the state of Georgia, it's five and a quarter. I, yep, it's in that report. <laughs> yeah, and I was if, surprised and when I read that. You can't, was... you can't even get a hearing for the bill. Listen to me. Right now, there's a bill. Dewey McLean in Gwinnett County has introduced this bill for the last few years, just to raise it to fifteen bucks, yeah. or, and to stagger it. I'm not even talking about twenty bucks. Okay. Well, and, and fifteen dollars full time, fifteen dollars full time, because we have people who are getting fifteen dollars an hour and they only make part time hours, so they still get minimum wage. Of course, listen, and then and and then and then get this, and then here's the kicker: an apartment is what fifteen, eighteen, two thousand dollars a month. Try more like two thousand twenty five hundred. Okay. And if that's four hundred square feet, it might be thirteen hundred. Yeah, okay. <laughs> right. So so at that. That's the reason why we have a growing homeless population. I mean, let's be clear about that. Oh, and here's another here's another one because I testified this week on uh, on trying to reestablish rent regulations. You know, you know, in Georgia. So mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're not educated, that's a, that's where where we began, and you're you're caught up sort of in a dead end, low paying job, and you're mm -hmm. unable to to meet your obligations, and you can't live. And then on top of that, you know, the, the landlords are doing whatever they want to do. So let me ask you this. I can kind of see kind of sort of how you can have sort of high rents in the Atlanta metropolitan region, just based, based on supply and demand and the growing population. But how is mm -hmm. how can you have an apartment in Macon or Albany at two thousand dollars a month? How can that be? Yeah. How can that be? We have some where I live, but he's talking about Macon and I understand. And but where the jobs there, there's nothing. You're yeah. somewhere in the desert. Right, and I'm not putting I'm not putting those areas down. It's just it's not the same economic engines. Uh, we, engines. It's yeah. just, it's and, just and, like and, we, and, and there's no. I was saying to somebody today. Today, literally had this conversation today. You know where is the the push to 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 uh, to advocate? You, you know, so for example, if if you ever go to Virginia, what's the tagline? Virginia is for lovers. Yeah. Or if you yeah, go to yeah. New York, you know, I love New York campaign. Well, what about Georgia? Uh -huh. Savannah, see, I've never seen one advertisement on television about coming to Savannah. I've never seen one advertisement. Columbus is a beautiful city. Come to Columbus. Yeah. Come to mm -hmm. Albany. Come to Macon. You know, I, I don't see where, you know, where, where, they, where they're really ginning up, uh, you know, really talking about, you know, uh, Georgia is a beautiful state. And some of these regions really need an economic development plan for these areas or, you're going to continue to see this mass exodus of people leaving rural Georgia, and the ones who are left behind, who can't go, they're going to be even. It's more misery to come, and they'll be left with service industry type jobs. Absolutely, and and that's fine. You just can't support and, it is. and sustain a family. It's unsustainable. It can't. And let me tell you something. With AI, I, I could talk to you all forever. 
what we know about AI in terms of the year 2030, and that's only what six years away. Mm -hmm. Look at now, it's a game changer now. Mm -hmm. It's a game, you know, it, it, and so with that, so for those people who are just hanging on to, 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 to menial jobs, not in a, not in a mean way, you, it, the tsunami is coming. They're going to be replaced. Done. It's over. Yeah. It's over. Which, is why we, which is why we need to get people retrained and get, Agreed. Young, people, Agreed. And get young people also into technology because that's where future is. That's where the future is. Yes. If I can make a plug, our fellow uh, podcast host, uh, Audrey, she's she has launched, if I'm not mistaken, a training session for women to get into the IT sector for coding, yep. AI, and so forth. And if I'm not mistaken, it's launching this month. So check it that is. out if anybody's interested in that. And even when we had Hicks on here, um, Antonio Hicks talking about mm -hmm. another fellow podcaster in the IT field yeah. talking about the, and I don't quote me, but it was such a small percentage, less than 10, maybe less than five of people who look like us in the IT industry at that tier level. And even your report said that the- I was about to say the report. <laughs> yeah, you got to read it, Karen, if you got it in front of you. <laughs> because that report, oh, you'll have, okay, yeah. So the report <laughs> says up to, I think from the 70s to $300,000, that you yeah, earn in that right. industry, you know, and that's the industry that we do not represent. You know, it's so many industries like Karen and I trying to put a you and our producers look, we big time. Our producers, <laughs> I love you show, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> they're trying to put together, uh, we're trying to put together a show for uh, air traffic mechanics or the fields that generations are aging out yes and our younger folks because it's not sexy or romantic or it's not like an influencer or what have you um these are jobs that are going to have empty spaces accounting my friend in accounting they're looking for accountants like these are jobs that are skill sets that are needed teachers you know? nurses there's there's a doctor yes. shortage if you believe in this country um, um um if they're really serious about filling these filling these yeah these gaps mm -hmm. they need to be paying for school so that so there's some programs that are paying for minorities to go into a school to be air to be trained as air traffic controllers mm -hmm. if they're really serious about people going into nursing uh educa education medicine they have to they have they have to pay for people to go they're to gonna school. have to do it for, for no other reason than survival of the fittest yeah because right. i promise you listen to me I, I listen listen if somebody would have told me that I would have seen a balloon of a foreign national government traveling across the continental United States. I would Wasn't never would have lived in my life. Yeah. But they did it. A government, a foreign national government mm -hmm. to test us. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And nobody talks about them. All right. Do you remember that? Right. Yes, I remember it. Because yeah, we're like, why wasn't that thing shot down before yeah. it even got to California yeah. Coast? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so so we're, we're, you know, we're being challenged as a country. You know, I, I said to somebody, I said to a full committee meeting yesterday, I think it was last night. I'm, it's all blurry now. Uh, you know, it's like we have 20 people in a rowboat, 10 in the front and 10 in the back. And for whatever reason, you know, you know, we don't like, you know, the people that we don't like, we decided we don't like, or the, 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 the so-called minority, you know, we, we shove them in the back of the boat and we're rowing. And, and, and you can't, you can't row the boat. You can't da, da, da. Mm -hmm. But the other guys are going past us. We're yeah. in, a, in a global competition. I promise you. So help me God. We are. And if everybody is not in this boat, rolling this boat, baby, we're going to have a problem. Every, Lottie, Dottie, and everybody. So it's, a, it's in our best interest to make sure that all of our, you know, what, what did Jesse used to say? Rising tides lifts all boats. That's Jesse right. Jackson always said that. And that's the truth. So it's that's the truth. We, we got to get everybody else on board that don't look like us. Uh, that's, that's well, we got to listen. We, we got to build some coalitions. Like you said, we, we are our own saviors. We are the ones, we have the numbers, we have the intelligence, we, we have the resources. We do. We have to step up and stand up and advocate for ourselves. We do. And not be ourselves. afraid. And not be afraid. And even I, I'm if supposed you to are, the people with this whisper, oh Lord Jesus, yeah. stop that. Yeah. But even if you are afraid, stand up and open your be mouth. Be afraid, feel the fear, but do it anyway. Oh, come on. Oh, so, so Susan Jeffers, come on. <laughs> I, come on, don't let me start. Feel the fear. It's a great book. And do it anyway. And come on do now. It anyway. And I do love it anyway. Because we don't we you're not alone. We are no. in this fight. Because I want my children to make it 
to have children. Yes. I want my my grandchildren to be able to read at fifth grade level when they're in the third grade. Amen. I want and, my kids. Go ahead. Not only that, I want my children and my grandchildren to do economically better than me. I want them to be able to have more than what I had, which is the 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 dream that my parents had for us. And we, mm -hmm. my brother, my sister and I were able to do exceedingly more than what our parents mm -hmm. were able mm -hmm. to do. And I want the generations under me to be able to have that same access and opportunity. Absolutely. And, you know, and, and unless there's a shift. We're losing ground. Yeah, there's we lost more home ownership uh, during that 2008. If you remember yeah. when President Clinton, we had gained tremendous amount of home ownership during the Clinton administration. Yeah. And by the time by the time that that uh, recession was over with Barack Obama, through no fault of his own, we had eroded all of those gains in terms of home ownership, and that leads to generational wealth. Yeah. Ask, ask the Bush family. Yeah. Ask the Kennedy family. Ask the Rockefellers. Mm -hmm. Am I right or wrong? That's the truth. Because yeah. for a lot of for a lot of our families, your house is the will be the only thing that you have left to give to your children. Come on, for a it. lot of us. For a lot of us, and that's Which okay. Which takes us back to education. Yes, yes, because yes. and the and the power to advocate for yourself and partnering with organizations like yours, like Gwinnett Stop like yes. listening to our podcast where we're bringing down the hard truths about things that people don't want to talk about. You have to align yourself and get connected so you can start advocating. Start going to your local meetings. Go wherever city you live in. Go to that city's website. Find out when their meetings are. Make it a plan even if you can do it the next month. They happen every month. Mm -hmm. Same time, same place. Same bad every channel. Month. <laughs> same, right same bad channel that's right thanks so if you can if you stay tuned to a a, a radio station that you like to you know get down yep. with it make a plan and put it on your calendar to go start learning about some things so you can add value to the conversation and be able to advocate for yourself and your family and the rest of us and then Period. and then it's take your information go into a voting booth and vote if barack was on here He's Barack would say the president would say, "Don't get mad, vote, vote, vote." <laughs> That's right. <laughs> With your pay, like, take action. Don't just get mad. Yes. Take action. Amen. Amen. Take action. That's right. And so we let have, that we anger, have, let that anger you. catapult you. Boom. Yes. And so we've mm -hmm. had a Facebook user who was saying great advice when we were talking earlier, and then when we were talking about uh, we have to get involved. The Facebook user said, "We do." Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. But thank you, again, you. the reason why I really, um, I mean, I, I, you dropped some wisdom, the, the Urban League dropped some wisdom uh, in this report, the status of, of, of Black Georgia. But again, you also, you didn't just say, here's the problem. You came up with recommendations for the Georgia legislature. How receptive, so um, how receptive were they to your policy recommendations? It depends on who you were talking to. Okay. Well, that's fair, I guess. Okay. Did, let's say, did you get I can a, tell you a, one a thing over that 50%? The, I can tell you that the Georgia Legislative Black Caucus was very receptive. Okay. With open arms. Okay. <laughs> and I mean that in a respectful way. They were. They were supportive, you know, because those are our people, right? Mm -hmm. but, but we have to build coalitions beyond the Georgia Legislative Black Caucus because we need uh, we need more numbers to get this stuff over over the uh, over the finish line, so when you what say we, numbers, you need more advocates. Well, we need you know we you know, we need more numbers you know you know in terms of legislation. Had, so oh, for I got example, it. Mm -hmm. On the on the wage on the minimum wage legislation that that uh, uh, Representative uh, Dewey McLean introduced, you could never get a hearing on it. Mm. To, to on the on the bill that Roger Bruce in Atlanta passed in terms of trying to put, put together get a minority business enterprise program. Could never get a hearing on it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it goes on. We have a bill right now. It's a Senate Bill 125. Senator Don Zella James has introduced a bill to reestablish rent mm -hmm. regulations in the state of Georgia. It would be nice if we can get a hearing on it. You know, so right now I'm at the state capitol now 
fighting for rent regulation, fighting to get the minimum wage rates, for making sure that we get a gun safety law right now, making trying to make sure that you know our, our, our kids have, have access to kindergarten, fighting right now to see if perhaps we can expand Medicaid in there. So you don't know okay. mean on and on and on. So you have to um we're going to issue we have a legislative policy agenda at the Urban League with the bills that we support. We're going to publish that uh you should see that on the website pretty soon. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, stay tuned for it. And that'll tell you what we bills we are supporting. Thanks. We will make sure. But I, I know from from this status, from this status of uh, Black Georgia that you uh, published, the Urban League wanted to see investment in data infrastructure, a commitment to address racial disparities, and to end Georgia's inhumane reliance on state and local revenue sources. Um, mm -hmm meaning using bail as a mm -hmm. as a means to fund their government using fines and court fees um oh, yeah i mean i mean i mean you have to you, you have to understand like, in, certain, in certain parts of the state like in, uh, in many other parts and it's not just you know uh, georgia i mean you know correctional facilities i mean that's an that's an economic engine yeah i mean if you it's, it's it, you know people get you know there's jobs and procurement every you know a, a prison is almost like a hospital think about everything yeah. that you need to support a, a a facility that's a lot of jobs a lot of procurement a lot of this a lot of that doctors nurses you know physicians lawyers this and that uh, police uh, corrections officers and other stuff that we can't even fathom to support that so it, you know that's a, that generates that's a generator but it's it's regressive right i mean we need it don't get me wrong. We need public safety. So let's be clear on that. We do. You know, Absolutely. We and, and we are not we advocating need. that there We're should not. not be a justice We're system. We're not. I work We're in not. the justice system. We You're need not. justice and safety. We do. Yes. Thank you. Something right. goes wrong, I'm picking up and I'm calling the police department. <laughs> Don't right. help me. You know, absolutely. But what I'm saying is, is that we have to sort of diversify. There has to be other engines to drive these economies. And we just mm -hmm. can't rely on that. Absolutely. In those Absolutely. particular communities. Love it. Yep. Kelly, so, yeah. do you have any parting words? You know, I got to ask the last question that we always do, Mr. Moy. Yes, ma'am. What is it that you do with all this work, all these days you go to the Capitol and you're fighting for us and I appreciate it. We love that you're doing that. But what do you do, your number one self-care remedy? Because we believe in mental wellness and we always want to leave people with a tip and inspiration on taking care of their own mental wellness. So what do you do? I get on a plane. I go to Hartsville, Jackson. I get on a plane. I fly about less than two hours to New York City, and I go out and I visit my grandchildren on Long Island. Oh. And that oh, is therapeutic right. for me. I'm sure it is. <laughs> I know that's right. I know that's right. As they are bringing you joy. They <laughs> are. Love them. Two beautiful And keeping boys. you in shape. I know they bring you around. <laughs> How old are they? Levi is four, and oh. Soren James is one years old. And I promise you, they're the oh. handsomest boys, and you know, <laughs> unbelievable. Of course, every um, you know, I'm pop pop, so I got to say that. But, uh, okay, but right. they really, I really love are it. good stuff. So, That's absolutely love it. Too. At a time yeah. of family, you guys have been good. great. You guys are listen. All jokes aside, I thank you all for what you do. It's needed. And your voice, I, I don't care if you guys reach two people, uh, but it's its powerful and it's a powerful platform. So thank you all for what you do. I hope you'll invite invite me back. I'd love to come back. We will because yes. I, want to, I want to hear about after, yeah. after this legislative session, who you were able to reach and whose ear outcome? were you able to bend yeah. to get right. legislative ideas you know, and priorities out there. You know what I've learned? Here's what I've learned too. Mm -hmm. That sometimes we go into our silos and you have to, in order to, to get things done, you have to talk to everybody. Mm. And, you know, and sometimes I know there's a lot of noise on, on, from, from every different direction, mm -hmm. but sometimes if you can get somebody, if, you know, it's hard to hate somebody when you know them. It's hard yes. to hate somebody if you break bread with them and you swap stories about your kids and your grandkids and your children and your wife. It's hard to hate them. It's hard, you know, because at the end of the day, we all want the same thing, don't we? Yes. We want our kids to be safe. We want our, our families to be loved. We want to have incomes. We want to go to school. We all want the same thing. And sometimes it's compromise. We have to bend to give, to give and bend. 
but I realized as, as I get deeper into this thing, you know, you really do have to be nonpartisan in a lot of ways. Because once you start at that, at that, you know, you, you know, people will shut you out. But where can we, we may disagree, but where can we agree? So let's work, on the, let's work on the agreements. That's right. Yeah. Absolutely. And yeah. humanity is a good place to uh, agree. Uh, the Facebook viewers say a great therapy. Thank you for that. Yeah. Appreciate you. All about that was talking, uh, being with the grandkids is great therapy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, actually re- I actually replied, uh, being with the grandbabies is great, great therapy. And then you get to give them back. You say bye. Yeah. So you yeah. like, Dad, you're leaving. Love you. Uh-huh. <laughs> you and your husband. Uh-huh. You guys are great. Yeah, I'm I'm totally quiet. <laughs> then you're like, okay, deuces. They take the deuces. <laughs> they 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 nope. <laughs> See you guys for the next holiday, you know, whatever. But anyway, yeah. so yeah. thank yeah. you all. And as always, we want to thank our viewers thank you and John Moy for joining us on this episode of Conversations with Karen and Kat. Well, we are impacting the world one conversation at a time.